you are a content creator like me and you are looking for a powerful yet not too expensive laptop that can handle a heavy load for video editing, yes, don't go further, this is the beast that you need to tame. This is the Aftershock Apex 17R Lite Edition. We bought this laptop for content creation and let me tell you why. 4K 400 megabits 420, check. Can it handle Mavic 2 Pro and Insta360 footage? Check. Color accuracy for internet? Check. Is it cheap? Check. If you come from a different country than Singapore, you may see this laptop under a different naming. Electronics RP17, XMG Core 17 and many other names depending on where you are from. So like I have mentioned, we bought this laptop for content creation but especially for video editing on Adobe Premiere Pro. So the focus of this video will be mainly about that. If you want to know more about this laptop for general use and for gaming, stay tuned because the next video will be more for gaming and general use. Because I am also a gamer, like many of you out there. Let's go it further and let me show you what this Apex 17R Lite Edition laptop has in store. It's a pretty cool laptop, am I right? So all I care about is to be able to download the footage, cut, edit, color grade, and maybe throw in some effects, and to push it to YouTube as soon as possible. For that, I believe that the most important feature is to be able to have a smooth light playback, because this is where we spend the most time on the computer. I don't know about you, but I have lost a lot of time waiting for the proxy to finish, waiting for the warp stabilizer to analyze, or having some skippy footage which would make me go back and to check again. So let's have a look at that to see whether this Apex 17 R Lite Edition can handle video editing or not. So these are my Fujifilm 4K 400 megabytes footage. So let's see how it looks like on a live playback at a full resolution on a 4K footage from the Fujifilm X-T4. So far it seems quite good. The indicator is still showing as green, which means zero frame drop during the playback. Let me scroll through to see how it looks like, okay. I would say overall it's not very smooth when you're trying to move backward and forward, but it's not too bad, it's a very light delay. So you may get a few drop frame over the playback of a Fujifilm 4K footage. So it's not a big issue, I would say, because it's only a, a few frames. I have done this test two, three times, and sometimes I get two or 10 frames drop, but it's not a big issue because we're only talking about a few frames. And one thing you need to keep in mind is that this is a live playback at a full resolution. So I don't think you need to be really on a full resolution. You can drop it to half or uh, one fourth. So let me add some color grading and let's see how it looks like. But as you can see here, there's not much issue uh, to have a live playback on a Fujifilm 4K footage, 400 megabits, all intra, F-log with color grading. So we have about 130 minutes of footage from the Fujifilm X-T4. Let's see how it looks like when we render it. Overall, after five minutes, five, 10 minutes of editing, uh, it's not hot yet. So I don't know if you can hear from this microphone, but the fan are working very uh, hard uh, during this rendering. So let me put this microphone a bit closer. Okay. And about two minutes after the start of the rendering, it's over. So we have here uh, a different project where we have more uh, transaction, color grade, uh, footage and all this. And let me show you the playback of this project. So with proxy and at one fourth resolution, no draw frame, it's working quite well. So let's try a live playback of this project without proxy. And let's see how it looks like. So same, we'll keep at one fourth resolution, okay. So, so far it's working quite well. There's no drop frame. Even with the different footage and effects that we have with color grading and music. 
So there's no drop frame, uh, the laptop is working quite well and it's able to handle uh, the 4K footage from the Fujifilm X-T4, even without proxy. And now let's have a look at the Mavic 2 Pro footage and let's see if this Apex 17 r Lite Edition is able to handle it. So these are uh, 4K footage. So let's see if we're able to play back without any issues. No drop frame at 140 resolution. Let's move on to full resolution. So similarly here, no drop frame after 20 seconds of live playback of this footage. Let me add some color grading. Oh, even with uh, color grading, there is not no drop frame at all. Well, I'm quite impressed by this laptop. To be able to handle 4K footage, Mavic 2 Pro footage, so the last test we're gonna do is also to test the Insta360 footage to see if this laptop can handle 360 footage from the one R. We will import some of the footage. We will take this one, or this one, and this one, and put it here. Then I will import these three clips to the timeline. Wow, so handsome. Then we will add the plugin. So let's add a bit of effect. So we will do a 180 degree turn. So now let's play back this and let's see whether the laptop is able to do that without any drop frame at full resolution. So we have a few drop frame at full resolution. 70 drop frame now. So let's play it again to see whether it's a one-time issue or whether it's a recurring issue. Oops, Adobe Premiere Pro crashed, I think, it looks like. Okay, on this second try, there's less issue, as you can see. So far, only 41 frames dropped. 81 now. 110. 165. 230. Okay, so this is confirmed for the Insta... 361R, uh, the laptop has some issue to do the live playback at full resolution. Probably with a proxy, uh, it may work better. So let's do a quick proxy and see if it works well. So let's see with the proxy how the live playback looks like, whether the laptop is able to handle it or not. So we already have a few one drop frame. So it looks like with the proxy, it's working quite well. We don't have many drop frame, only one so far, compared to before where we had about two, three, four hundreds. So let's do the same test at uh, one fourth resolution with the proxy. So with proxy at one fourth, the Apex 17 R Lite Edition is able to handle the Insta360 footage and that is without any drop frame. So I think it's it's a good thing. Uh, this laptop is able to handle this. Maybe not perfectly because you still need to do a proxy, but it can do it. So you can still edit your Insta 261 R footage on this laptop. So now let's go back to the original Fujifilm 4K footage. Let's have a look at the performance, how much memory Adobe Premiere Pro is using. So we are talking about 12, 12 gigabyte of memory. And this is just a basic footage, 4K footage with a color grading. So imagine you have music, multiple layers of video. It may go even higher than 12 gigabyte. Let's open the Taiwan project and let's see how much memory it is using. So this is our Taiwan project. 4K footage, one fourth resolution without proxy. And you can see that the memory consumption is going up to 21 gigabyte and it's going up, no, 17 gigabyte, 16. So having the 32 gigabyte memory uh, is definitely needed if you are planning for 4K footage video editing. Okay. So why we got this laptop, the Apex 17 R Lite Edition over some other laptop from the competition, it is mainly because of the latest AMD processor, the Ryzen 4800H. 
And Aftershock is one of the only manufacturers that allows us to configure the memory to have 32 GB. And as you can see, it was needed. On top of that, you may have other applications on your computer. So Windows, 2 or 3 GB, Google Chrome, and especially Google Chrome, if you open a lot of tabs, you may have a lot of memory used. Your driver for your mouse, your keyboard, and all that, and all the other software that you may have installed on your computer. So this is why it's important to have a certain margin of free memory for your other stuff. Laptops from AMD competitors <coughs> Intel cost way more and may not be as powerful as this processor. There is one thing that you need to know, is that this processor from AMD, the 4800H, consume less energy and less electricity to bring out such a power. And it is able to be on par with the processor from Intel and consume less energy. After one hour of editing on this laptop plugged in, it was pretty cool on the keyboard and the touchpad, but pretty hot on the ventilation. Unfortunately, I don't have all the gear to measure the temperature on different parts of the laptop, so I can only convey my feeling in terms of heatness or coolness. This monitor is a 72% NTSC, which is also translated to about 9900% of sRGB. In a simple term, this would mean that the color editing or color grading that you do on your photo or your footage won't differ too much when you view it on a different support. There is one thing that you need to be careful with this monitor, is if you're planning to do some printing. So if you color grade on this monitor and you print it, you will end up having a totally different result in terms of color. So if you're planning to print, you may want to buy an external monitor. And if you cannot have an external monitor, buy a different laptop. So one great thing that I like about this laptop, it has an SD card reader, so you don't have to travel with all your SD card reader dongle with you. It's very simple, you just have to plug in your SD card and you can transfer it. Well, well, well. Even though this is not a sponsored video, I hope that I managed to convince you to empty your already thin pocket or wallet in order to buy this laptop. The Apex 17 R Lite Edition can definitely handle 4K footage from camera like Fujifilm X-T3 or X-T4 or Mavic 2 Pro in SAT360 with the need of proxy. If this is what you're looking for, this may be the perfect laptop for you. It's cheap, it can handle those footage, it's pretty decent quality. The color accuracy is quite good for posting media on the internet. What more do you want? Hmm? If you like this video, hit the like button or punch the subscribe button if you haven't done it already. If you're a gamer like me, stay tuned because the next review will be more for general use and a gaming review because we all are gamers. Deep down. I mean. <laughs> after one after after one hour la, 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 la. You may have seen previously on the spec of the computer that we chose to customize to total <laughs> oh. Because this is where we spend the most of the data. <laughs> Yeah, cool.